world of operation research, uh, Ravindra Ahuja, and uh, so he has some unique experience how to bring such kind of let's say achievements from science, from academics to industry, to and to implement them and to help really uh, solve real solutions in the world. So um, I think therefore we are here and just to share how we are doing it and uh, to explain how to do it in the most efficient way. This is just our journey, how we grow. So as I said, we just started as some kind of from scientific uh, uh, part of uh, from science. So it's uh, it, in 2000, uh, innovative sch uh, scheduling has been established. Then we grow, we uh, grow fr from industrial part. We implemented some solution in railroad, tracking, mining industry, airline industry, and also uh, we established different offices in uh, uh, US, Armenia, India, and Australia. And as you see, it's growing very fast. And uh, now also we are expanding our presence in Europe, in CIS countries, and also in Asia Pacific part. Uh, it's uh, very important that uh, you understand that as long as we have, we need to use some scientific achievements, some operation research, cutting edge technologies. So, it's very important to have people who can implement it. And if you see, so we have 50 plus PhDs in our company uh, who helps us to build such kind of successful solutions for different industries. And uh, also we are dealing multinational uh, company with multinational cultures, mix of cultures, but it, uh, uh, we are capable to really bring these multinational cultures in, uh, manage it in, most efficient way and therefore I think it's key of our success uh, as I said we need to have hybrid or mix of different let's say uh, uh, technologies fields like transportation and logistics like operation research computer science project management data analytics information technology and you need to it's some kind of interdisciplinary uh, Field so field so you need to mix it and really in order to build more or less successful solutions for uh, uh, real industry in transportation. Um, so I think uh, my colleagues uh, will uh, describe uh, real cases from airlines and railroad, but also we have presence in trucking industry and also mining industry. And if you see how many disciplines, how many types of expertise experience you need just to implement such kind of solutions is really amazing. Uh, so I would like to give floor uh, to Shama so he will describe or represent the airline case study. I think it will be very interesting. Thank you. Okay, so this airline case study is actually uh, not only the first one that we did as a company, but it's actually one of the most important and difficult problems that an airline must solve. So the business problem. I don't like reading slides, but I feel like I must read this one because it's very important. The business problem is to maximize an airline's total net network profitability by determining the best flight departure time, the best fleet type, and the optimal routings to minimize the number of aircrafts. That's a mouthful, so let me walk you through that. Let's look at this example right here. So we have an A330. It leaves GFK at 1 a.m. Um, it's an overnight flight and it gets into Moscow at 5.20 p.m. the next day. And then um, it sits on the ground for about an hour, and then it comes to Armenia. Woohoo! Came from uh, New York all the way to Armenia. Can anybody guess what um, airline operates this route? This is based off a real airline. Two Ch airlines, Ukraine Airlines and Air Force. Czech Airlines. Half right. Austrian Airlines. Air Force. Air Force, yeah. correct. Um, I have actually flown a route very similar to this uh, four times coming to Armenia. And I can assure you that it has nothing to do with how awesome I think Aeroflot is. It has absolutely to do with the fact that it was leaving New York, where I lived, and it was coming to Armenia, where I was going, and it left at a time that I wanted to leave, and it arrived at a time that I wanted to arrive. So you can see how important this is, right? Now. Why did they choose an A330? 
Why that fleet type? Why not an A380? Why not pick a bigger plane? Why go with an Airbus at all? Why not go with a Boeing 777? I mean, the airline, larger airlines have large fleets. So they can assign any plane to this flight. Or maybe want it to be more frequent, the flights? Um, how would the A380 be less frequent? Or Boeing 777 be less frequent? You know, all the people, so they may be free places in their aircraft. OK, so capacity, right? So larger planes. Um, can house more people. Great. Um, why one? Why leave at one? Why not leave a little bit earlier? And maybe I get into Moscow around noon and catch my lunch meeting. Why not? Why not leave later? Why? Why get into uh, Moscow around 5 p.m.? I don't have anything to do that day. I would rather sleep in in JFK, spend more time partying in New York, and then catch and sleep through my flight and getting to Moscow and then do whatever I want. Or what about this plane? Why, why does it have to go to Armenia next? Why not London? Why not Kiev? We have, we have all these different options, all these different routes, all these different decisions that an airline has to make. Why did they choose this one? As you can see, and this, I picked a problem with three fleet types, um, two flights, and two departure times. But a large airline with hundreds of planes, um, thousands of markets, um, you can see the problem gets to be very large. So optimal flight times, that's actually one of the biggest challenges that an airline must uh, solve. So everybody has their own time of day preference, right? Or maybe even time of week. Sometimes I want to fly Friday so I can meet up with my friends over the weekend and then come back on Sunday, right? And I want to fly Friday after work so I don't take a day off. And I want to fly Sunday late at night, so I have that Sunday. So depends on where you're going. Um, JFK to Moscow. So if I'm leaving New York, I have my own time of day preference. Maybe I want to leave earlier, maybe I want to leave later. So the curve that you see here is the preference by time of day. So the demand varies by time of day. Um, the chart on the right is a similar curve, but it's the curve for Moscow to Yerevan. Now, as you can see, this is, a, this is the same plane that operates both flights sequentially. So here, you can say, oh, it's easy. Well, the peak is right here, so let's put the plane right there. OK, well, if the plane. Maybe you want to go and party over there, they cannot see. Can you see that? Yeah. So, well, the peak is right there, so let's put the plane somewhere around here. Look at that. I got all these people going from GFK to Moscow. But this plane, it's going to get to Moscow, and then it's going to go to Armenia. So, well, if it leaves JFK at this time, then it'll get to Moscow this time, and then for the people going to Moscow to Armenia, it's, I didn't hit this peak at all, so maybe I ship this later. Okay, I got that peak. Wait, what happened here? So I lost the demand on the JFK to uh, Moscow, but I got it in my Moscow to Armenia. So you can see just simply this, two, this Two market problem, one departure time, can have a major impact on what you really get as your demand. And that's just the departure time. There's also the fleet type. So the gentleman in the back excellently um, mentioned that you want to match capacity to demand. So the last thing an airline wants are empty seats, right? Empty seats, are, they just take up space. I know we like them because we can stretch our legs, lay down but an airline hates them because that's money that they're not making. So what they want to do is, if they have 70 people flying on that flight, they want to put a plane with exactly 70 seats. So they want to minimize bill and minimize cost. Connections, this is a critical factor, and this is what makes this problem extremely complicated. So, what do, you, do you buy flights? Do you buy flights? Yes? Yes. Do you buy, do you, when, you, when you go online, um, do you say, do you search for a flight or do you search for a trip to go from point A to point B, which might touch multiple flights? An itinerary, exactly. So what we really buy, the money that really comes from, is not from the flights, it's actually for itineraries. I could, there could be one flight operated by one plane, I could get off, get on another flight operated by another plane. So 
the only way I can do that is if I have enough time to make my connection, right? In my previous example, I was coming from New York, I was connecting in Moscow, and I was going to Armenia. So that plane, that itinerary was actually operated by two different planes. And I had a two hour connection time, so I could make that. Now, suppose those two different planes, the timing didn't work out, and I only had, say, a 20 minute connection, 30 minute connection. Now what? Now Airflot can't offer a ticket going from New York to Armenia. So you can see that the timings must match up perfectly to create these connection opportunities such that now they can offer itineraries to cities where they don't have non-stop service. I don't, they don't, Airflot didn't need to have a non-stop flight going from New York to Armenia to get me from New York to Armenia. They needed to have flights that are timed perfectly with just enough connection time to make sure that I can get on both planes. And that's, I'm just talking about from your standpoint. Now what about an airline? So airlines have hundreds of operational constraints that they have to deal with. So curfews, you can't fly whenever you want. Airports in certain cities have limitations. You can't fly between, say, midnight or 5 a.m. because people are sleeping. Um, Major international airports are slot constrained, meaning that you actually have to have a specific slot at that airport to arrive or depart at that time. Gates, right? You need to have a gate that you can park your plane at. So I could have 10 flights arriving at the same time, but five gates, and then and now I have five planes that are sitting on the runway waiting for a gate to become available. And once a plane is sitting on the ground, it's not making any money. Planes make money when they're flying in the air. And you share a runway, you share an airport, not, you don't have an airport to yourself as an airline, you share an airport with other airlines. So the number of arrivals or departures you can have at any given moment is, is throttled, it's limited because you share, share this space. So as you can see, the problem is, is not so trivial. The thing that you're solving for is complicated. The constraints that you have are complicated. So how do we solve this? You have five minutes. So our approach, um, step one, clean the data. 